So there's a, there's a, there's a disconnect in the way we make films. Mm. We didn't have the cinema culture. We were colonized as a people mm. because cinema had been existing since the late, um, late 19th century. Mm. Africans couldn't make films until they got independence. <laughs> Okay, now welcome to another interesting episode of It's a Wrap. And as you know, we like to have film conversations. If it's film, we talk about it. And mostly if it's Nollywood, we talk about it because we're very um, attentive to the growth of Nollywood and we're looking and hoping that, you know, Nollywood gets to where it's supposed to be. I mean, you know, the giant since filmmaking in the world. Now, uh, my name is Demi, uh, for those that do not know, and I'm having a very interesting conversation today with uh, Mr. Daniel Oriahi. Yeah, did I get the surgery right? You got it, you got it. <laughs> good, good. Now, he's the director of the um, film show in the cinemas now. It's just one of the most talk talked about films now on, on social media. It's called The Weekend, right? First, is it, is it a thriller or horror? It's a thriller, horror, and family drama. Okay, because yeah. there's a lot of that debate on social yeah. media to yeah. know what, what particular yeah, genre. Yeah, it's um, basically what you call a hybrid genre, which is a, okay. which is a blend of several genres. Oh, it's, okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a technique that is very popular in East Asian cinema, especially mm. Japanese and South Korean. Mm. And it, it was informed by the fact that you need to attract as much audience as possible, as possible. to your product. Yeah. So basically, it, it's, the, it's, it's an innovative style of storytelling where you can blend so many genres. Mm. So one film of contemporary times that we could talk about is a film called Parasite. Mm, yeah, so Parasite, Parasite, you know, it starts like a comedy where yeah. you have these people trying to infiltrate the rich yeah. home. Yeah. And literally, there's a doorbell and the story changes Absolutely. plots, you know. So basically, yeah. that's the kind of narrative pattern we use uh, for this film. Great, great. I mean, I, I saw the film, I've seen the film, and um, I'm impressed because... Um, First off, I've not seen too many films like that. I've not seen any film like this in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a long while. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this to quote things. I'm just saying this because um, I think it's high time we start trying stuff mm -hmm. and start doing um, other than the usual. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria and Hollywood at the moment, there's a lot of drama and love, all those things going on. Mm -hmm. And we get it, you know, but film is even brother mm -hmm. in genres, when mm -hmm. you're talking genres. So, mm -hmm. and, and this for me was interesting to see, mm -hmm. at the same time, challenging to see. Mm -hmm. Right, because of how, I mean, I'm looking and I'm saying to myself that can we actually pull up or pull up, pull up a horror film in Nigeria? Mm. You know, I've seen people try it in the past and it mm. didn't work. Mm -hmm. But there's something about there's something about this film that would get you on your toes when you're watching some part and you're sort of scared. Mm. Now the thing about um, Nollywood and horror films is mm. you watch it and you don't get scared. Yeah, compared to when you're watching foreign films, yeah. you know. Yeah. But this film, there's a bit of fear that you'd feel. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I need to ask you first off, why you've done Sylvia? Yeah, I did Sylvia. And your films are very, they're very brain. Like you need to pay attention. They're cerebral. Yeah, you need yeah. to pay attention. If yeah. you if, if you miss certain scenes, you might miss the entire story. Yeah. Right. Now tell me why the weekend was important for you to yeah. direct or to work on. Um. So first and foremost, I'm a filmmaker. I have to make a living. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> then the truth about it is that I gravitate to a certain kind of genres. Okay. Um. And that's basically over time I discovered is maybe the way I grew up. I loved yeah. film a lot. I knew like at the age of 13 I wanted to do films, yeah. but I didn't necessarily understand understand the kind of films I wanted to make yeah. until I had a personal epiphany of some sort and mm. I realized the kind of films that I really blended in and like mm. my first feature film is a psychological horror actually, mm. oh, okay. um, Misfits. Oh. Um, then I did Taxi Driver Okwasha which yeah, was like a it. crime black comedy mm. kind of narrative yeah. but I realized over time that I liked I liked to deal with stories that had hints of um, so the way i'm attracted to a film is basically the themes mm. um and some themes resonate with me so things like betrayal relationship betrayal mm. um things like psychological trauma mm. i find them very fascinating um so when the script for the weekend came i obviously it had that big reveal mm. you know which which comes up in the one hour mark where you now realize what the family what the family does for a as in you know the tradition of the family mm. but i said i didn't want that to be the primary focus in the film mm. so i wanted it to be about how these characters are trying to navigate the space you know especially like so basically it's a film where two characters have to go through a kind of uh, uh, evolutionary arc you know, and the two main characters are the guy and the girl. Mm. Um, so I really wanted to focus on that and like what was the goal of this character and what's the goal of this character. Mm. The big reveal 
I felt we couldn't pull it off where we are as an industry that it will look believable. Yeah. So I chose not to show too much of it and let the minds of viewers just like, you know, project it the way they want to see it, mm. you know, because there's this, you, you know, you're trying to maintain that suspension of disbelief mm. through the course of the film. So you don't want to do something where maybe the prosthetics looks weird mm. and somebody's like, nah, that doesn't look like a head, that doesn't look like a body, yeah. you know, and that takes you for that moment out of the film, then you yeah. don't believe the film anymore. Yeah. You're yeah. not trying to like augment your head for that period. Let's just watch this film and move mm. on. But for me, it was like, how do I maintain, you know, that consistency and engagement with audiences mm. to the point where audiences can just believe whatever they want to see. And I said, it has to be in their head. The action mm. has to play in their head. So that's why a lot of the activities that take place in the film take place off camera. Mm. And we do reflect, we, do, we always go to the reverse reaction of the person seeing the horror, so mm. to speak. Mm. Because that way, it, it now rested on the actor who is witnessing the horror mm. to convey the horror to the audience. Mm. Mm. As against something that they see and yeah. they're like, ah, yeah. I don't believe it's, that. It's not, it's yeah, not. yeah, yeah. And there's something you said I wanted, that, that I wanted to touch on, which is leaving the audience to their curiosity as far yes. as film is concerned. Yes. I feel like in Nigeria, we try to want to show everything. Of course, of course. And I don't know what that is. Maybe you can help me understand why well, that is. Well, you have to look at the history of, or the evolution of film in Nigeria. Mm. It started from theater. Mm. You know, Herbert Ogunde, traveling theater. Yeah. Then they decided that, okay, we need to, ev we need to evolve. Mm. We need to use technology. And that's why Herbert Ogunde and the rest are shooting, literally shooting their, um, their stage performances. And that's why, to a large extent, a lot of our films look very theatrical in staging. Mm. Um, then there was the whole SAP era and we couldn't make films, then Nollywood evolved from that. Yeah. But Nollywood was born out of people who were TV oriented. Mm. So the guys who made the first Living in Bondage at the Red, they all worked for like NTA and all mm. those places, mm. but they had to use synonyms because the marketers like Kenneth Nibwe who produced uh, Living in Bondage, he had a shipload of tapes. Mm. VHS tapes and I was like okay what can we do with this so we can make movies and like okay who who makes movies mm. then they hired TV guys yeah. so the TV orientation has influenced the way we tell stories cinematically mm. so there's a there's a there's a disconnect in the way we make films yeah. we feel and that's not our problem that's it's, it's, it's just our fault it's it's mm. to a large extent because mm. What were we exposed to? Mm. We didn't have the cinema culture. We were colonized as a people mm. because cinema had been existing since the late um, late 19th century. Mm. But we were colonized. Um, Africans couldn't make films until they got independence, right? And when independence happened, a lot of countries became dictatorships. Like they were they were they were they were governed by military, mm. and they were censored to a very large extent. And that influenced what was coming into us. Mm. So a lot of these things, you have to say, what's our history? What have we really been exposed to? Yeah. It's only recently with maybe the, the advent or the accessibility of DSTV and Netflix that a lot of people have started seeing like tons of films yeah. accessible. Mm. But even the Nollywood structure is based on bootlegging. It's based on piracy. True. You know? So that has really shaped the way we make films. Mm. We, we have a very... And if for a lack of a better word, we're very limited scope. Mm. So the people who can really make films are people who are cinephiles. Mm. But the challenge with making film and being a, cine a cinephile is that a cinephile just has to watch films. A filmmaker has to make films. Make films yeah. It's two different things. Yeah. You know, so when you find somebody who is a cinephile making films, you would see the difference yeah. in the way they approach it because Absolutely. they have this very massive, you know, uh, well. Mm. that they are picking their influences from yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. so the the dynamics of nollywood is because of its foundation mm. but that would change i hope it changes mm. you know because you need cinephiles to make films mm. yeah but mm. basically it's it's a very economic based kind of yeah, industry yeah, so yeah, that's the yeah, challenge yeah. i think i mean i i, I struggle with uh, some film some some movies uh, I, I watch movies a lot yeah and and i struggle with some lines and i'm trying to understand the thought behind yes why certain things or why the direction of the film is yes. going this way yeah and to be honest I, I i never really understand because i see a lot of um, hollywood films too 
not just Hollywood, even exactly. other, other parts of the world. Exactly. And I'm like, these guys are doing this. Why can't we do this? But yeah. then I think what you said in terms yeah. of how we started, yeah, um, sort of you know influenced to a large yeah. extent how we deliver our stuff. Now, 100%. let's talk about the actors in the film. Yes. First off, the story for me, mm. I like the story, but it's it's a very strange story. <laughs> it's not a story. It's not a typical Nigerian folklore. It's not yes. a typical Nigerian or you know, um, Tales by Moonlight and you hear yeah. this thing happening, yeah. you know. I know you're not the writer of the film, but yeah. you're the director of the film. Yeah. Or you're, uh, that, uh, so I don't know if the film was created by you, the story yeah. itself. Yeah. But there's something about the story that sticks and that exposes some parts of maybe Nigeria that we don't know about, Yeah. you know. And I was going to ask you the language you were speaking. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a point because I couldn't get the language. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So yeah. who says it's a Nigerian film? It's not a Nigerian film. Mm. It's just a film made by black people, African people, who mm. are taking their references and influences from African aesthetics. Uh, they don't speak anything that uh, says they are Nigerians. Uh, the language is not Nigerian. a Nigerian language. Okay. So I've had this discussion, <laughs> or rather, I've noticed It was in the cinema, they were like, what are they saying? I'm like, I don't Exactly. Know. <laughs> so the thing is, you know, the idea of film is that you are photographing, you are, you are literally capturing a photograph. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you are photographing a photograph. Mm. You are making a world. You are creating a world. Yeah. It, it's not real. Mm. Basically, it's not real, mm. you know? So that's the idea. But you see, okay. we've been so consumed by how we tell stories here that it has to be a Nigerian narrative. Exactly. And I'm like, it's not. Yeah. It's yeah. never It's never said that I did some research, mm. right? After the writer, amazing writer, mm. Vanessa Kanu, who wrote uh, Sylvia as well. Mm, okay. Yeah, so she was the main writer. Then we got in another writer when I came on board, mm. um, Freddie. Yeah. Um, and we did some rewrites together. The, 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 the thing about screenplays is that you have to understand that what you are writing is for visual storytelling, mm. right? Mm. So how do you... And the concept of visual storytelling is that people don't understand how, should I say, the visual components that make film. Yeah. They include sound design, music, lighting, mm. production design. You know, yeah, yeah. but most times when we think about these things, we think about just cinematography, mm, mm. you know, capture the image yeah, and all that. Yeah. But there's all those other elements. So the thing is from the writing, we wanted a tone that was very unsettling. Mm. So the story might not seem regular, but we amped that up with just the ambience yeah. of the narrative, just to keep it in such a way that you're watching the film and you're asking yourself, like, where, where is this going and what's up with these people? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was very deliberate, mm, if I may. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if that mm. answered Yeah, no, sure, sure it does. I, I think I must commend the cinematographer. Mm. Um, I thought the pictures were very intentional mm. and I thought there was a mood with the film. Mm. I think about Nollywood again. I mean, mm. like, I, I, I speak about this because... I've seen the number mm. and they, they feel it with the mood. Mm. The mood is always very, it's, it switches and mm. it's always very disturbing. I'm, I'm not sure where you're starting and where you're going. Mm. It just switches in front from the beginning, you see yeah. something and, and, and yeah. it's the thing about editing, I keep on talking yeah. about, and I say, when you edit a film, it's, it's different. It's not like you're editing a short, a short format or whatever. Mm. You need to tell a story with the edits. Of course. And even with the color and with the sound. Mm. And I must say the sound is good. Mm. I, I, I find it difficult to comment sound in Nollywood because I still I, I think to a large extent that we, we have a long way to go. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. You know, but but this was it would like I said the sound helped me or help people that were watching help them understand fear as mm. far as some of the things were concerned. Yeah. So you you would feel it. Yeah. Which is what film is about. Which yeah. is why when people tell me that cinema is mostly about sound and not exactly about the picture you're seeing because of the ambience and yeah. the surround noise, yeah. you need to feel yeah. like you're in the yeah. film. Yeah, so that, the film. That, was, that was very important because when we did, um, it's interesting, it was the same guy who did the music and sound design for- For Sylvia. For Sylvia that did oh, this okay. film. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. but I told him very clearly that I didn't want the music of this film to overpower the film. Mm, mm. It should just be consistent yeah. with how the narrative is going, yeah. you know, and we built our sound map accordingly to that mm. and we added some very weird things that yeah. you maybe probably have to watch the film several times to be like oh it. i didn't get that the yeah, first time yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. so it has that rewatchable value so yeah. to speak yeah. but like i said the um, the components of cinema uh this incorporating all these things together mm. and um I taught film. I I I I, okay. I, I did. Um, I headed the directing department at Ebony Life Creative Academy. Oh, okay. I I tutored before that. I tutored under a, an art historian and mm. a photojournalist. Mm. So it really has built my acumen about 
okay, film, grammar, mm. you know, um, compositions, lighting yeah. and yeah. all that. Yeah. Like I had like I had like a 200 page lookbook for the film. Mm. And interestingly, I wasn't the first director attached to the project. Yeah, I'm aware. Yeah. So the <laughs> director, they had some creative differences mm. and that director left. Mm. So I came in and I saw the script that the director had done. I said, I can't make this film, mm. you know, time constraint. And I didn't necessarily feel invested in the story mm, yeah. and and that's why the other writer had to come in and we did rewrite we first went back to the original script oh, which was written by vanessa kanu yeah. and we walked our way from there you know but the idea was that while i was at the film school teaching that was when i got the call to come and do this film but i'd spent seven years working on my personal project mm. just prepping for it developing it yeah. taking it for a uh, screen like a uh, screenwriting lab and all that kind mm. of stuff and in that process i had built a kind of um visual style that mm. i wanted to make my film which is titled black or studio mm. so when the opportunity for weekend came and there was very short time for prep i said okay you know what let me use the weekend like a testing mm. you know for mm. what i want to do with do black or studio okay. so i carried the style the mood and everything because it worked actually mm. so i just fused it into so i fused it so most of my lookbook most of my mood boards most of my treatment mm. i just literally carried them yeah, and wow. said okay let's just test it with the weekend and um, mm. yeah and i must say it, it's it's different it's, it's a different it's a different picture compared to what we've seen yeah in the past and you know it, it's it's coming but I, I think i think i should say well done for that you Thank know you. i appreciate that. yeah uh, let's talk about the actors now yes. um i thought uzoamaka was standout I must say, um, I, th I think I, I saw some of your interviews, I think with another brand where she was thankful, you know, for being starred in the film. Mm -hmm. uh, Bucci, frankly, is obviously yeah, an, amazing, an actor, amazing actor, you know, yeah. uh, Mr. Epi Young, oh, fantastic. you know, and, and for me, I was thinking, you know, for that character, Mr. Ep um, Epi's character, mostly, yes. I was looking around Nollywood because that's, that's the way I always say, oh, this actor is the best that could have played yeah. this. I look yeah. around and I'm like, who would have played this role if he wasn't him? Yeah with the gestures, yeah. with everything you're looking for, yeah. with a nice guy, and suddenly yeah. it becomes a very, you know, yeah. you know, and I'm like, I couldn't find one person for Mr. Epi Young. I couldn't find, mm. you know, which which would say, okay, to a large extent, some work was put into casting for this. Mm. Yes, it was. And bringing Meg Otawa back, I'm not saying you, maybe not exactly you brought her back, she's been a while, but maybe Loki. Mm. I know Meg, and I know when she won, I think the AMVCA some while, some years ago, you know, I know her to be a very fantastic actress. So, yeah. I, so I need to know what the thought process was with the actors. I know some directors work with some actors in mind. You know, you see your role and you're like, this person, this yeah. is, this has to be this person. Yeah. But let me know your process. Okay, so if I have time, I'll just break it down. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for Uzo Amaka, for instance, mm. um, when I was reading the script, I knew I wanted to do a lot of subtle performances. Okay. And I needed somebody who had a face that was subtly deceptive. Mm. You know, that had deceptive eyes that you couldn't necessarily tell so, yeah. what exactly yeah. she was thinking. Yeah. And it was just not, it was, it was a very easy pick, actually. Mm. And I sent the message to the producer. Interestingly, I just found out that she had been casted before for uh, the film by the previous director. Uh, then they shut down production. They didn't go ahead. Uh, so there was a period where nobody contacted her. Then she was contacted again when I came in to do auditions. Uh, so I brought her in and brought some other actors, you know, just to mix. But she was like my primary uh, pick, pick yeah. you know, because she had the face, she had the eyes that I wanted. Uh, um, for Bucci, I didn't cast Bucci. So Bucci has a long-standing relationship with the studio. Oh, okay. um, so they wanted to give him a starring role mm. because he had done a lot of support and he's an amazing actor. Actually, so so yeah. they gave him that Absolutely. and I was like, I don't have any problem because I'd seen him in one or two things and I really mm. liked him. Mm. For Kepi, I casted Kepi because I have worked with him severally on very small projects. Mm. And Kepi is a very domineering, he has a domineering yeah. physique yeah, and yeah, bullying yeah, physique. Yeah. And he's equally very... Um, athletic so to speak mm. you know and i was like okay the way i see this character there's a it's the presence it's mm. his presence it's his man it's just his energy he's mm. he doesn't need to move he doesn't need to shout you know what i mean yeah. like you just see him and you're like yeah. oh this guy is this yeah. the aura yeah. yeah he's just and he just fits into it perfectly mm. Mm. for gloria yeah. i had several people that I, we, we considered I was a bit skeptical about Gloria, <laughs> to be quite sincere, mm. but we walked in a way where these, these are veterans, yeah. you know, they know how to take directions. Yeah. And if you give them good directions, yeah. I remember one particular scene, you know, the scene she wanted to escape from the house yeah. and the mom was waiting and the mom for was her. Waiting, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we were setting up for that scene. We had shot several scenes before then. And I think that's when she understood that this, this is different. Mm. 
because we're setting up and the DP was like walking on the lights and he was like, and he was using one very funny looking light like that. So she was just standing, she was just sitting there like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I said, you good? You good? Yeah. She said, I'm good. I know what to do now. Mm. And she just, she just From changed. There, just, like, yeah. like she just understood, yeah. you know, because one thing I wanted to do was just create the mood. I mm. feel like audiences connect with the actors. Mm. True. The actors are the conduits. True. Every other thing, it's the director's responsibility to just create the enabling environment so that these actors can thrive yeah. and be able to communicate. So yeah. um, for Meg, I didn't cast Meg. Okay. But I've been, I've been an amazing um, fan. I, I've always been amazed by her performance and mm. all that. And one thing myself and Meg did for this film was like myself, uh, for Meg, um, Uzo Amaka and Buchi, we all had separate classes where we sat down and just spoke about the characters and we literally like just went through their emotional arc from beginning to the end mm. and at that one you can say okay this is what's going on this is what's going on here this is what's going on here. Yeah. even the hairstyle that meg otawa carries mm. because she had to replicate a particular animal uh, yeah a predatory animal uh, and we scowled we scowled you know did our research and it was an insect actually that we found so uh, her hairdo Mm. The way she walked and yeah. everything was kind of in the mannerism of that insect. Mm. But that's something that a lot of people wouldn't until yeah. now, you know. So yeah. we just, we did all that business and we call it like, what's her goal? What's her desire? Mm. Because she wants, she wants to be, she wants to be respected by her dad. Yeah. She wants to, she's trying to prove to the dad that I can run like, this family. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so all that, we just put that in. So mm. I think when people watch it over and over again, mm. people would respect or yeah. just realize like, oh, wow, these guys really were very deliberate about, about certain about, things. About the casting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I need to talk to directors more because, I mean, the breaking down for me is important to how film yeah. is being made. I mean, you seem like you take them through school before even before you eventually put it again on camera. Yeah. I know I've been on some sets and I'm coming from film. So I know I've been, so I've, I've, I, these things don't happen. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. don't, you just feel like it, this actor is good for it. And yeah, just, in truth, I'll be sincere about yeah. something. So the time frame between Sylvia and The weekend was like six, seven years. Um, um, I was doing stuff within those six, seven years that nobody knows. I've done web series, I've done TV movies, uh, I've done, you know, I've done stuff, you know. You don't get that opportunity most times uh, to be on a project. So even I had more time for prep for the week for Sylvia than I had for the weekend. Mm. The weekend was shot in 16 days. Sylvia was shot in 21. Mm. We had over two months of prep for Sylvia. I had just six weeks for, for the weekend. Mm. So things are even becoming more constricted. Mm. And that's the dynamics of Nollywood because time is money yeah. and we don't have money. So you, you have to like compress everything in such a short time mm. so that people can now make and that's where we now have our lapses most times uh, because these things take time mm. we can't take as many shots as we want yeah. so basically you have to for you to really excel above the craziness mm. as a director you might have to limit the work you do mm. the frequency of work you do because you fall into that rhythm of okay let's just point the camera and shoot mm. then there's no intentionality yeah, and that's yeah. why most Nollywood films they all look alike mm. You know, mm -hmm. but but with more with if you are if you are prepping ahead and you have, I always feel like a filmmaker has that time to prep mm -hmm. because I'm like, what else are you doing? You know yeah. what I mean. So so if you have that time to prep, prep really intentionally, yeah. you can get a good film mm -hmm. out. You mm -hmm. know, so mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think you mentioned money, as so I think I'll just use this to round up the conversation. Of course, when you're making a film like a, a horror thriller and all those combination mm -hmm. in the genres. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of the things that you probably not, maybe not think about a lot because you're the director and you mm. can probably get paid for this. And mm. that's probably where it stops for you mm. in terms of, you know, what is coming from the film, mm. you know, but in terms of um, marketing the film and getting money back, mm. you know, from the film, mm. were you in some type of way, maybe you were not, but let me just ask, were you some type of way concerned with how the Nigerian audience yes. would see certain genres? You mm -hmm. know, there's a time when it was comedy, yeah. when it was the, you know, the shanty and all this kind of thing. Yes. Now we're, we're moving Into back like, a bit towards comedy and trailer a bit. So yes, were, you, were you sort of concerned? Yeah. Yeah. So after making Sylvia, I was quite disappointed yeah. with the reception it got then. Um, I We blamed certain things. I blamed the marketing. I blamed the distribution, you know, mm. and we're like... It was a good film, by the way. Thank you very yeah. much, yeah. you know, and that really like took me back. Mm. Um, so for this film, 
I think one of the things that really drew me to it originally was like, okay, the studio is keen. I've done work with these guys. I know they will commit financially to mm. it, to mm. the execution. But there was another thing that really drew me into it. When they first approached me, they said, we want this film to go to festivals. Mm. And I was like, are you sure you know what you're talking about? Mm. Because I know what festivals want, yeah, yeah. right? And they're like, yes, we want it to go to festivals. Okay, then give me that space to give you a film that can go to festivals. Mm. And I am quite proud of the fact that we've gotten... Um, we got Tribeca, we have a yeah. London Film Festival now. Mm. Um, we're announcing two today, mm. two very major film festivals Impressive. as well. Yeah. Um, but that's, that has been the goal. And I felt like if we can make a film, and that's, that's how I have perceived it, I've seen it. So we had films like Eimo Fair, Mami Wata, mm. they've gone mm. for festivals, yeah, yeah. but they didn't really do well when they came back because mm. of the genre per se yeah, and yeah. because of the style of filmmaking. Most of those films are very transcendental or mm. meditative or art house kind of meaning mm. and the nigerian audience is mis mostly popular yeah. cinema yeah. right so i was like this film has to appeal to the critical crowd and the mainstream crowd in nigeria mm. Mm. and we're like okay we have to try and make it as small as possible mm. so like when i saw the previous script it was big you know what I mean? Like the whole wall they were yeah, trying to create. I was yeah. like, no, we bring it small. small yeah. Keep it small, everything yeah. small, family units, mm. keep it tight. Um, so I've always seen myself as a filmmaker that wants to make films that travel mm. and can equally still resonate. Mm. And I've been to quite a few festivals. And when I went to those festivals, I didn't really like the fact that I was being pigeonholed as a Nollywood filmmaker. Mm. And the concept of Nollywood is that Nollywood has this colloquial style of filmmaking. Mm. It's not necessarily cinema. Mm. It's just these people have created a way yeah. to continue making stories yeah. true. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want to make a film that I can, I can, it can stand with any other any, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we achieved that to a mm. large extent with yeah. this film. So yeah. yeah, moving forward, that's, that's basically what I want to approach. But I know the fact is those films come few. Mm. No, I agree totally. Yeah, and totally. I, I, I just feel like the next film I'm going to make might be a while, like mm. a film of this kind of yeah. intent with this kind of intentionality yeah. and all that. That doesn't mean I won't do work. I'll mm. do work to pay bills and all that. Mm. But to do a work that I'm like, this really speaks to me. Mm. It's take a while. That's Black Custodian, right? Yeah, Black Custodian. Like I said, I've been developing the work for like uh, since 2019. Mm. Um, did a lot of screenplay labs with it. Um, had have some French collaborators in terms of story development mm. and, and we're in a good place with the script mm. and it's it's just like serendipity that the weekend came yeah, yeah, yeah. to just help yeah, us yeah. like yeah. okay this yeah. is what they can do yeah, because yeah, yeah. interestingly if i have time to just mention this yeah, yeah, sure. i shared the, so we are pitching literally now for black Australia and trying to get the right partners mm. and all that and most of them the next question is when they see the pitch deck and the script and everything they say mm. what have you done mm. before mm. and i remember showing one person sylvia and the person got back to me with feedback. Mm. And the person said, whoever directed Sylvia cannot do justice to Black Custodian. Wow. And I was impressed mm. because that meant Black Custodian was a good script. Yeah. You know, and I felt challenged that I have to do something to mm. prove to this person that yeah, I can do can Black Custodian. Yeah, yeah. So The Weekend Now is that film, in my opinion. Mm. And I've been... I've been very conscious sharing information with that yeah, person, like yeah. numbers, articles, yeah, festival. Yeah. And it's basically was like, wow, 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 that's good, yeah, that's good, that's yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. I mean, conversations on social media. I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't I wasn't ecstatic about the film. Yeah, when 100%, it came out, I get it. You know, um, but I got feedback from people. And I was like, you need to see this film. Damn, you need to see this film. Hmm. You know, and I was like, okay. And I saw this film the day before this interview. I'm like, yeah, I, so I, your, your mind is really I, I fresh. To I, see it, yeah, you know? yeah. I, was, and I went with my friends. We're like four of us in the oh, cinemas. Oh, wow. We went to Ebony Live Cinemas. I'm yeah, yeah. like, we need to, and we went for the last ticket. Wow. So it, it was, the, the was, was, was 9.40. Already? Yeah, 9.40 p.m. Wow. That's some people there. I said, I needed to just go there and see this film. I don't want anybody to, I want to watch this film, you yeah. know, to get this film. Yeah. And I was impressed. Like I said, I, I don't really, films don't really impress me, mm. you know, but but this is impressive. And thank I must you. say, which is why we're doing this. Yes, thank you. Because I think it's a film that people need to see. Thank you. And people need to just know that, you know, we can do more than what we are actually doing in Hollywood at the moment. Yeah. Stories need to make sense. Yeah. Plot needs to join properly. You yeah. know, the plots can be disjointed. Yeah. Acting performances needs to be top notch. Yeah. You know, the camera work, uh, the setting, everything, sound design, 
the whole post-production process needs to be evident and you, people need to see the hard work you put into the film. Yes. Because if I hear that you made the film for whatever million and I'm trying looking and I'm like, where's the million in this film? I cannot yeah. see it, you yeah. know. Yeah. But that was sort of evident. I don't want to ask you how much you made the film for. It. Well, if you well, want to know, um, it's above a hundred, mm. it, but it's not up to two hundred. Uh, yeah, okay. even with marketing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay. Because I'm, we I'm tried just... to keep it really contained. Uh, you know, what really takes the budget from films is logistics, moving mm, people from point from A to point to, uh, B, renting equipment, yeah. and all. That's what really takes. You know. Mm. Um, yeah. Great stuff. I mean, thank you for coming around to Paul Sutter Rap. Um, it's been a very informative conversation. Thank you very much. And I really hope that we could have another day and maybe when Black Custodian is out or something else, <laughs> that we could talk about, you know, uh, the film and the success, you know, I'm projecting. Thank you. The success I appreciate I that. Make. Weekend is doing good and I hope that people see it. You all should go and see it, okay? Yeah. Thank you, you for can. coming. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, as you know, um, yeah, it's been a good conversation. Go on, what the weekend. Let me know what you think. Let us know what you think. And uh, have a good time, okay? It's a wrap. <laughs>